Hey, good morning, YouTube. Welcome back to the channel, Lincoln Logs TV. Today, we are going to do a little bit of a laminate flooring. So there's a few different parts to this. One, we have to clear out the room behind me. You gotta get all the furniture out, lamps. There's a bed in here and a chair. Everything's gotta be out. There's a closet that has a ton of stuff in it. That's all gonna be cleared out. Then we'll remove the carpet and we'll move the carpet uh, pad and then the carpet tack strip, which is the little wooden slats around the outside that hold the carpet down in place. So we'll get all that stuff out of here. And then after that, we will jump on the installation part. Stay tuned, appreciate you guys logging on. In this segment, I have to move all the furniture out. I have to be really careful not to nick up or ding up the walls or the furniture itself. Uh, this is my own house, so I'm not super concerned about it. But typically, our company won't move people's furniture for them. We request that they remove it themselves and wrap up anything that they think is important. Also in this segment, you'll notice the red dog. That is our family's golden retriever, Bentley. He's quite the character and likes to get involved with uh, quite a few of the projects I do around the house. So you'll see him and the white dog, our little white dog, our Shih Tzu, Waldo. They like to kind of mess around and play. So you'll see them in and out of this uh, particular episode. All right, so we're all cleaned up here. Um, I, I got everything swept out, everything vacuumed out. I want to do a real good, make sure I do a real good job vacuuming everything because it just eliminates headaches of having to, you know, go back on stuff when I'm uh, putting flooring down. Uh, it just makes a little more sense to do it that way. Got all the carpet up. That that took was pretty easy. Y you can probably see back here. There's some like yellowish, orangish coloring stuff here. Uh, it's actually old glue. Uh, this is my house, um, by the way. When we bought the house. There was glued down carpet in this room and all through the next room, which is my office right next to us. And it was, I mean, glued down. Like it took me hours to get this stuff up um, when we first bought the house. Uh, 10 or, it was, it'll be 11 years ago next month when we first moved in. So I got all this stuff out of there. But there was also, they, my carpet guys did this um, 11 years ago and they glued down the pad just on the perimeter. So you saw I had to get the scraper out just to get all that extra pad stuff off of there. So um, another thing you have to be really careful for on these things, those tack strips are really sharp. They have little teeth that are angular and point towards the wall. So when the carpet lays on it and they stretch the carpet over, it grabs and can't pull back that way. Those things are super sharp and there's literally thousands of them all over a room. Concrete subfloor, this is all an old garage, I think. Um, it was already like this when I bought it for the most part, but um, <clears throat> old garage floor. So they had to use special cut nails to install those uh, tax strips and you have to be really careful. I'm gonna see if you guys can get a good look at that. It's not really focusing, but um, those are the little nails that they use. Um, those come with the tax strips, but you have to make sure you get all those up off the floor. Uh, that's why I sweep and you'll notice I sweep as I go. I don't just make a huge mess and just clean all up at one time. I sweep as I go to try to manage the area. So I make sure I get this stuff. If you lay down your, your laminate flooring or if you're gonna go back with carpet and you have one of these in there and don't see it, yeah, guess what? You gotta take it all back out because that will ruin that piece of laminate and crack it if it's up underneath the floor and it's just sitting on top of it. When you walk on it, it'll crack that laminate over time. So gotta be super careful to make sure you get that stuff out of there. So uh, up next, we're gonna uh, do a little unboxing and do a little bit of layout work. Um, right now I'm gonna get some lunch, but uh, we'll do some unboxing, some layout work and show you guys how we're gonna lay this thing out before we start installing. Okay, so we're back from lunch. Well, um, we're gonna talk about a couple things about layout and the product. Let's first take a look at our product here. It's just a six millimeter. It's not super thick. It's not the most expensive stuff in the world. Um, it, it's just an extra bedroom. I didn't want to spend a buttload of money on this stuff, but it's just the, the MSI. It's made by MSI. It's called the Everlife and the Ashton series. I don't even know what color it's called. I just like the way it looks. It's like a, a grayish, tannish brown. It's really neutral. It'll go well with all the colors in here. It's super easy to install. So you can see, I've got a little layout here. This is just kind of the, the effect it's gonna look like. We're gonna start in this corner over here and work our way this way. We want the uh, groove to be towards the wall and the tongue to be out this way and then we lock them in underneath and snap it down. Very simple, very simple to do. Anybody can do this. You don't need a hired professional. Now let's take a whole look at the room. 
So the room itself, we, we need to determine which way. Do we want to run our boards this way or do we want to run them this way? What I, my usual rule of thumb is I will usually say, I'm going to run my wood, my flooring parallel to the longest wall. All right. So if this wall was 20 feet in this and it was 10 feet this way, I would run everything this way. Vice versa if it was going this way. This room is actually perfectly square. It's 11 foot six by 11 foot six. And there's a small little three foot by four foot closet in there that we'll be doing. So we want to start in the left hand corner. I'm just, if it's, if it's a square room, it doesn't matter to me. I'm just, I think aesthetically, I just, my personal preference is going to be to run them parallel like this way. So I set it up like that. A couple of things we have to be aware of. One, we need some allowance. We got to have a quarter inch gap up against our baseboards on all four sides of the room to allow for some expansion and contraction. I'll have a transition I'll have to make here um, or that I have to install. I've got to install it around this door and going around this door. This will be kind of the crux of the project, these two cuts around this doorway. This stuff can be a little bit... Uh, a little bit of a pain when we're trying to get stuff fixed around a doorway. You've got to make some special cuts and, and undercut the door jam. This door jam was already cut um, high because it had carpet and then we had a tile there. So I just, when I installed the door 11 years, I just put that in there. So the product is actually a vinyl flooring. It's not actually a true laminate like the old school laminates. It's actually, you can see, big deal here. Waterproof rigid core waterproof being the key uh term on this stuff this stuff is great we put it in basements all the time great for over concrete slabs easy to install i think i paid a 280 dollars for about 170 feet of this i get all my flooring like this from a place called big dog flooring uh chip payton is the owner um he and his guy john down there do great work they do all my carpet installs. They've done a lot of laminate installs. They did the laminate install for me. Um, we did a similar project on this on the, uh, the historic project we just finished downtown that I have one of my first films on, my first videos on. Um, they do outstanding work. I will leave a link to those guys in the um, description here so you guys have a, uh, a website. Great product. Highly recommend you guys go. They've got an awesome showroom. All right, so we're going to start laying this thing down. It shouldn't take too long. Um, it only took me like an hour and a half to get it uh, cleaned out and cleaned up and all the carpet out and vacuumed up and everything and the floor prepped. Um, so I'm thinking a couple hours and I'll have this thing done. I'll do cutting on my saw and my shop out back and um, we're out pretty simple with that. Let's get a little, little look at how, uh, how this thing goes. Here I'm starting to get the flooring installed. We have to often contend with unsquare rooms, unlevel walls and unlevel floors and things of that nature. So this first piece is pretty important. I try to make sure that I'm pretty even across it with the same even reveal and keeping it honest with the with the squareness of the room. No room is perfectly square. So of course I, I have to kind of finagle these first couple pieces to get them set up and to make sure the rest of it goes properly. Going pretty well so far. I've got about, I don't know, Maybe a third, maybe two thirds, or uh, just under half of it done. Um, a couple of things I'm finding, it's not the best laminate in the world, which I knew that when I bought it. So it's taken a little bit of finagling and I have to be careful when I tap my pieces into place because I'm finding it's tapping my other in loose that I already installed just a little bit. So I have to, like every time I put a piece in, I have to back check the other piece, which is fine. If you get some of the higher end stuff that's five, eight bucks a foot, then you don't have to worry about that. It locks in super tight, but this stuff's a little, kind of a little bit, uh, a little bit loose on the back end. Not a big deal. Different types of laminate have different ways of connecting better. You know, you can start with the end, drop it down and slap it in, or start with the back and slap it in and tap it down. I'm finding that I go with my ends, get those locked in, set it down, and I get it real close, and then I tap it. I use a, it's just a non-marring hammer. It's just a rubber mallet, all it is. It doesn't, it's a, that gray color, so it doesn't leave a black streak if I tap it. And I'm not whacking on it, I'm just tapping it into place. And it worked real well around the doorway, and it's working well on the back end and just tapping stuff back into place. So I'm gonna keep rolling with this thing. I don't know if I'll get it all done today because that closet over there is gonna take me a little bit to cut around all those pieces and kind of tap some stuff into place. This is a point in the project where I start to really feel it in my knees. So you see I use our green, my little green mat, a gymnastics mat that I take everywhere with me on most of my job sites, just to help save my poor 44 year old knees the agony of a day on concrete. Okay, so 
we're about two thirds or actually about three quarters of the way done. Now we're getting into this closet back here. This is gonna take a little bit of time. I've gotta undercut the jams on that uh, door and then I've gotta get the casing cut under as well. The door, the entry door to the room did not have that problem, it was already cut. Um, I just, when I did the casing uh, back 11 years ago, when we uh, remodeled the house, I didn't end up taking it all the way down. But on that door it is. So I'm gonna use an oscillating tool. You can see it's got the uh, blade on it and it just, it's kind of like a sawzall on and it just oscillates back and forth. We call it a buzz buzz because it makes a lot of buzzing noises. But I'm gonna undercut these at the perfect height so my flooring can go underneath that door and look like a professional job. I can, a lot of times I can see, I can identify when a homeowner does a job on flooring because they don't take the extra couple minutes to, or extra time or don't have the tools to make that undercut and they just run it flush to the casing and you can see gaps down in the subfloor. It doesn't look very good. So um, when you get paid for this stuff like I do, like, like my company does, it's important that this small stuff is done correctly. So I'm gonna get this cut and we're gonna keep on rolling with our installation. As I mentioned earlier, this closet really was the crux of the project. The interior walls of that closet were not square. They were not even remotely square. They were about an inch or maybe an inch and a quarter out of square. So trying to get that flooring to wrap around that closet entry, that, that jam on the left, up against a square wall and I had to backfill a piece in it. I was in that closet for a little bit and I wanted to make sure it looked right. So I, I just took my time and made sure that I transitioned around that thing properly. And, and it took us some finagling, some patience, but I, we, I eventually got it done. All right, so it's right about 4.30 in the afternoon. Everything's done. I actually had some problems with the door. It took me a little bit longer than I thought. That thing was a big pain in the butt and shifting around to the other side is always a challenge with these kind of floors. And really it's just kind of what took a, I mean, that, that closet probably took me 45 minutes to an hour by itself. So really I started about 10 o'clock this morning after I got the crew going somewhere else and got paychecks out today, it's Friday. Um, and then I, st I start about 10 with everything and I'm finished right at 4.30 at the end of a normal work day. So but we're like with the, with the lunch break, I'm you know five and a half, six hours in. So not too bad on, on labor. There is one more step here and I'm gonna show you. So as you guys can see here, I don't know if you can see this real well, but there's a gap there. There's supposed to be. It's a quarter inch gap that goes all the way around the room. It, you, you leave that gap allowance to allow for move, movement and you can see it goes it goes all the way around the room and inside the closet. I've got to put shoe mold on that and I nailed the shoe mold to the wall. We're going to do that first thing in the morning. I'll, I'll do the installation on that um, little time lapse. It should only take about five or 10 minutes to get uh, everything set up and, and going. I only need about maybe six pieces of shoe mold and I get to test out my new uh, miter saw. So we'll get that going tomorrow morning. Okay, so it's the next day. It's now Saturday early afternoon. All I really need to do now to finish this thing out is to cut all of my uh, shoe molding and install it. So really all I need for this is a piece of paper, handy tape measure, and something to write with. I'm going to measure all my pieces first and cut them all at one time. It's just a little bit easier for me. I've been doing this for a long time. So it's okay to go back and forth on from piece to piece, but there's only three big pieces, one small piece in there, and then one uh, that are the three or four small pieces inside the closet. So I'm gonna do everything out here at one time and I'll go back and do everything inside the closet at one time. <laughs> Quick joinery tips. So I'm using a cope joint. It's hard to see with the camera there. But um, yeah, I use, I use coping. I, we cope all our joints here. Um, it's just a higher quality. We cut the, the, um, the contour of the piece before it. Um, it's pretty easy to do, to be honest with you, especially with a little quarter round. But one of the things I see that drives me nuts, and I'll, I see contractors do this all the time. Um, my light's really bad in here, I'm sorry. I, I see it all the time, is contractors will take and leave an open end of the piece. So what they'll do is, we've coped this piece on this end. You can see that, that goes up against the other piece. But this end, you see, I cope at a 45 degree, I cut at a 45 degree angle and I put a return on it. What a return looks like is just this. It's a little teeny piece. Can you see that? The light's not great. Little teeny piece that caps that off. See that? It caps off that end, it looks finished. So it makes it look like it turns a corner. 
That's the kind of stuff I look for in a job. This small detail. A lot of guys will just cut it straight, will cut a 45 or a 22 and a half on the end of it and leave the butt end of it open and just caulk it and paint it. I don't like doing that. It looks, uh, I think it looks a much more finished when you have that little, that little piece in there. See that? It just covers, it caps that end off. It looks a lot more finished. So that's how we do it. One of those little things that when you're getting paid for it, it makes a big difference. So um, I'm gonna finish up this closet and then we'll be done with this install. All right, so we're done. Uh, this is what it's supposed to look like. All right, everything's finished out. I got all my trim on, got everything cleaned up. See all the shoe molding around there, all the way around the perimeter. Goes all the way around the room. Floor's floating on top, so it's gonna be a pretty nice setup for service if we ever have service in the future that we have to have. Here's the closet, the view of the closet. Nice corners. I'm going to show you one of those return corners and what they look like after we get them done. They're right there. Returns that corner. I do have to I have to caulk and paint it still, but it'll look really good after I get that caulk and paint on. All right, so that's it for this episode of Lincoln Logs TV. Appreciate everybody logging in uh, and watching and taking the time to see how we do things here at Fitzgerald Construction Group. If you have any questions, any comments, feel free to shoot them out there. If you like what you see, Hit that subscribe button. Like I always say, you guys help make all this stuff happen. Uh, if, if you have any ideas or any tricks or tips, let me know. I'll, like I say in all my videos, I'm trying to learn more about this stuff every day. I'm not perfect. I try to do it as best I can, but any tricks, tips, anything like that, leave, leave me in a comment. Leave me something in a comment. Also, if you have something in your house that you have a question about or something you want to see done, let me know. I've got a ton of work on this house. I've got a ton of work on my uh, projects. Anything you want to see done in detail, let me know. Leave me a comment. I'll see if we can hook you guys up. Uh, I've got a request from my brother-in-law down in Georgia to do a little bit of drywall repair on a ceiling. So I think we might punch a hole in a wall somewhere and do that for him. So uh, yeah, again, appreciate you guys logging on to Lincoln Logs TV. Have a great weekend.